So in the number two, we learned uh, something about element of high quality program, right? And we learned something about how to declare the variable and constant here, right? And you know that we have to two type of constant and, and variable. The first one is the numeric uh, constant. The second one is string constant. And for variable also, right? Variable, they are name, memory, location, and it's changeable, right? That's why content can vary or differ over time. And also when you declare the variation, you can use another type, identify that means variable name. And also at the beginning, you can give some value to the variable at the beginning. It's okay, it's totally fine. So that is a for basically for every uh, program before you work with the with the with the variable, you should declare here yeah, to do the declaration. Right? The Python exception, you do not have to declare it. But for any other program, you should you should. And so you have the data type, you have, it can be the numeric variable, it how digit, right? and it has a string variable, it can hold text here. Right? And so uh, when, again, try to, to, try to have the good practice with programming, that try to use the meaningful variable. It's very important. Right? If you have a very complicated program, you have a lot, a lot, a lot of variables. So it's really helpful. For you to use a meaningful variable here, right? So that's why try to use a reasonable and descriptive uh, name for variable, and also, uh, you most language allow the letter digit, and some allow the hyphen. Keyword you are not able to use, right? So think about with the pipe with the Python here, you cannot use a you cannot use an input as a variable name, and you cannot use a print here as a variable name. They are keyword, right? So. And again, it's very important. Variable names, they are case sensitive. Right? That's why you see whenever you modify my program here, whenever you modify say to this one, you got the same like that. Because they are not consistent. Right? They are not consistent. Right? Okay. They are cons uh, case sensitive. Right? Must be one word away. Right? It must be one word away. And must start with the letter. You cannot start with a with, with a number here. And should have some meaningful uh, meaning here. Okay, and you have some of the convention with the uh, variable name. And when you when you when you work with any convention, you should consistent with that choice. Now assignment, right? Assignment is very important. That assignment that when you work with assignment, you put uh you assign some value to the variable on the left. Huh? Think about this one here. I got my number from my, my from end user, and I want to double my number. I want to assign the value of this one to the my answer. So whenever you do with the with with the assignment, remember that the the variable on the left is the one you want to assign value with. Right? And so when you have the assignment here, actually you have to do everything on the right first. You figure out what is the value on the right. And after you figure out the value on the right, you take that value, you give it to the variable on the left. Make sense? Okay, so basically, for this program here. Basically, for this program, you can see, I get input from end user. Uh, it's my number here. And think about if user enters the number 10, I have one slot in my memory with the name my number and it stores the value of 10. Right? So what happened with the assignment here? So actually, it execute on the right, right? So program here. Oh, where is my number? It reference to the slot with the name my number, right? And take it out value of number 10 and time it to two, I have number 20. After I pick it out number 20, I give this value to the variable on the left. So basically, after this step here, I have another slot in memory with the name my answer here. And let's store the value of 20. Right? And of course, when you want to print it out, use the, use the output, you take it out. What is the my answer value? Take it out and print it that way. Right? Okay. Okay, and when you declare the variable or when you want to initialize variable, use the use value, you assign it's an equal sign here. Right? That's all. 
okay and also when in the curve declaration whenever you have the constant you by you should put everything on the upper case it's very easy for you to follow right do not use it here do not use the unnamed unnamed constant here so instead of we get out as a tag amount the pi times 0 0.06 here so sometimes you have to take time to guess what is 0 0.06 here right it's very hard for you again if you have very very long program and complicated program it's very hard for you to, to follow so instead of that you put a sale tag amount here and of course at the beginning you put a sale tax yeah. And you put 0 0.06 at the beginning. Right? So when you follow the program, you know that it is constant and you look it up, it is 0 0.06. And it gives you really meaningful uh, what is going on. Right? Okay, and you learn about some of the arithmetic operations. You have addition, you have uh, subtraction. Uh, you have multiplication, division, uh, exponent, and modular. I, I explained it uh, to you on the class already. And you have to remember about the priority when you do with the operation. Uh, okay, now the two very important concepts I want to uh, I want to explain on, on module number two is the first one, modularization. Right? And modulation is that is a process you break it down the com complex program into the into the module here. Uh, you have some benefit when you work with modulation. I I I explain it to you that can 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 you guys tell me some of the benefit here? Can you name some of the benefits when you work with modulation? Organized, easy to read. Yes, right. Easy to read, right? And see, I think look with similar and uh, you can do in the parallel. When you assign the team to multiple projects here, right? They can do each of them, they can work with the module here. That's the third one is that reusable because one you can do one more, you can develop for one module, but you can reuse it again and again in your, in your program and in another program, so, right? That is some benefit of the modularization here. And uh, I explain this one later. So I just want to uh, about I should want to explain it to you that whenever you work the modular program, right? So whenever you call the module, that actually very important here. Whenever you standing from where you can standing from the main module or is you can stand it from the another module. Whenever you call the module here, actually program stop it. It jump it to the module, right? Stop it from the from the calling module. It's jump it to the 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 module you call here. Execute everything from the first statement to the last statement here. So when you're done with the last statement, again, you have to come back to the module who called me and you move to the next statement. Right? And I show it very clearly when I'm when I when I do with the with the with, with, with the after, I can show it already. And so we can do with the approach. Okay, so easy to read, right? easy to design, you can do it in the parallel, it can be used all one, more than one time, and so on. And he, I explained something about the local variable and uh, uh, global variable already. Okay. Now, that's the first concept. That's the first concept. It's very important concept on, on this, more, on this uh, module. It is the first one, it's a modularization, right? The second thing is that mainline logic here. So the mainline logic is very, very helpful when you work with the, with the procedural computer program here, right? And for the mainline logic, you just remember that for the mainline logic, you have the four components here. The first one, declaration, right? The second one, it's a housekeeping, right? Housekeeping, remember, it's very important. You have to do the housekeeping beginning of the program, right? In order to get ready for the rest of the program. So again, I I give you the example. What is housekeeping uh, letter here? And the third one is the detail loop. Detail loop that is actually you do it again and again and again and again right? until you have the condition to access the loop. And the last one is the end of program, end of job. So in the case of mainline logic, 
it very very helpful in the case you do the action. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think about this program here. I want to I want to write a program to ask the user enter the neighbor employee right and enter the cross of employee here. From that one, I can figure it out the deduct what is the deduction and I can figure it out what's the net it up here. And you see, it do the action again and again here. Uh, first employee is the second employee, is the third employee, the fourth employee, and so on. So basically, you see, when you do the same action again, you have to think about using the loop, right? The loop here. And of course, when you work the loop, you have the condition to, to check here. If the condition is true, keep doing it again, right? If condition is not true, you exit the loop. So basically, for the main line logic, it's very helpful in the case you work with the, with the loop here. Now, if you look on the main line logic here, again, okay, you have the four components here. You have the four components. The first one, declaration. Right? The second one here, housekeeping here. If you look on the housekeeping with the, with the rectangle and on the bar on that, you understand that is the module. Right? Because this one is the module here. That's the one is the module. And when you have the module, of course, you have to define what is housekeeping somewhere. Right? You, have to, you have to call for the module. Now again for this one here, you check if not and apply EOF here and apply. If not, uh, if not, keep doing it. You have to do anything with what is your name or uh, sorry, what is your gross income? You can figure out what, the, what is the deduction and what the net income, right? And again, you check the condition. If not and apply, keep doing it and have. So here you have the four components of the program here. Now we go back to the specific example for this one. Uh, this one is specific example, and you see on the left it is a flowchart, and on the right it is a pseudo code here. And you can see this is everything about the main program. Uh, this one, everything about main program. You have four components: declaration here, uh, every variable and constant you use in this program. Uh, you have housekeeping here. So what happened when you execute program? It do everything with declaration. Uh, it go to the housekeeping, zip it module. When you call this module, a program stop it and it jump it to the housekeeping here. It execute everything from the first statement to last statement in the housekeeping. Right? And okay, when you're done with the housekeeping, you go back, it, you see, you have written here. You go back to the main program, you go into the loop, you check the connection here. If the name is not equal to quit, quit here, it, it's a constant, I, I, I here, right? If the name is not, I, 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 uh, yes, you go to the detail loop again. Detail loop here is the action you call the module, right? So when you detail loop here, actually it jump it to the everything on this one here, it jump everything into this one. All right. So what is it? What is your gross side? Uh, what is a you can figure out what is the deduct, what is the net, and you print it out name, gross, and deduct here. And of course you have action action to get a new name of the next employee in order to do the loop here. Right? And again, when you're done with this one, you exit it, end of job, what is it? Uh, is that actually is the it down. So that is the process. It works with the, with the flowchart. And on the case of the pseudo code, it exactly follows the same. It's exactly follows the same. You see, you have the declaration. Right? You have housekeeping. You have a body of the loop. And you have end of the job here. Now, See how we translate this one in, in, into the zero code here. Everything do it. Uh, now, what is it? Z is the action. You call for the module name housekeeping. So we, when you call it, stop it here. Uh, jump it to the housekeeping. Uh, jump it to the housekeeping. You do everything from the first statement to the last statement. Uh, and you've done it. You return to the main module. You move it to the next one here. Uh, and you check if the name. If not, act, 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 you do with detail loop. Again, this action call for the module, right? Call the module, stop it here, jump it to the module, right? Jump it to the module. What is your gross? Pick it out, what is the deduct? What's the deduct net? And print it out. You have action to get the new name here. Okay, that's all. That's that's the case when you work the mainline logic. Mainline logic, right? Very, very helpful in when you work with the, uh, the loop here. So in the pseudo code, uh, in the pseudo code, something you have to remember here in the pseudo code, whenever you see about why here, you know that is a loop. Uh, 
why here is that you have condition here to check you have a condition here to check that is a loop uh, and of course you have y and you have n y it's when n of the loop uh, so in the serial code whenever you see the y you know that is an about the loop and for the loop you always have the condition to check right uh, if the condition is correct true you keep doing it if the condition is not correct you exit make sense are you clear about the flowchart and that serial code for this program? Okay. Yes, that's what I see. Now, something again I mentioned about the, the, the four components. You have declaration. Housekeeping is very, very important because you need to get it in order to get that thing. <laughs> right? You think about this one here. The housekeeping. Sorry. The housekeeping in this process here. Actually, you should get the name of the first employer. First employer, not the first employer. Right, so see, you need it because when you go to the loop, you have the condition here. Right? You check if the name, you see, name here, you got it from the from the housekeeping. Right? For the first iteration, you got the name here. Right? So what's the name is not like, like, like. Right? I go to detail loop here. Detail loop, what is the cross? And I figured out what to do that. I figured out what is the net. I created out here. Now, that I done it for the first employee. Huh? Now, but see, if I want to move on to next employee, I need to get a new neighbor, like next employee here. I need to get it because you see, when you're done with the loop, you have to go back here to check. Huh? You have to go back here to check. It always have a condition here to check. Make sense? The same with this one here. It's very important in the, in the housekeeping here. I need to get a name of the first employee uh, in order to go to the loop to check here because I need to check the condition here. But in the detailed loop here, at the end, I only need to action to get the name of the next employee. I want to move on, move on, move on, move on to the next employee. Uh, Make sense? Okay. So this one also, when you work with, uh, when you work this one with the raptor, I have example. For both raptor and 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 and, and sorry. raptor and the python. Yeah. So this program I do it with a how uh, with a uh, raptor here, right? So you see, I have uh, I break it down into the main module. I have the housekeeping, I have detail loop, I have and the job also, right? So when I when I execute program, it execute everything, you can think about everything here, it is uh, you can think about everything here is a uh, declaration here. Right? Now when I work the housekeeping, you see it stop from here, go to the housekeeping, I need to get the name. Of the input employee, right? Because you see in the main module here, I have the condition here to check. If I don't get it from the input employee, you you got to see that error, right? You got to see that error. Here. Okay. Now you see when is the inside the body loop here? I do everything. I I get the cross. I get it uh, red. So I figured out the up and the net. I print it out. Okay. I have action to get the name. Of the next employee here. Huh? And of course, if I want to quit, I can put the I I I can. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. You can uh, you can see very clearly I, I, I do everything on, on the raptor on, on the raptor here. And when you work with the when when you work with the with the, the Python, I follow the same uh, structure here. I follow the same structure here. You can see when I open Python, now uh, you can think about this one here. You can think about this one. Huh? So see, I got the rate of 25%. Then here is a constant, right? Here is a constant and constant. The housekeeping is very important here. I get a name, right? And the name. Actually, I put it here. Of the first employee. The first only, right? Because I just need to do it for the first employee. But you see, the action here, you have to do it before the loop and outside the loop. Right? Now, you see, when I got the first name of first employee, 
I have the condition here to check. If the name is not here, it's not equal. This one is not equal, right? Sorry. This one not equal to quiz. What is the quiz? It is an uh, I, I, I. If the name is not I, 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 I get the gross. I figured out what is the data. I figured out what's the net. I print it out here. Now, and the name of the next employee. Make sense? And see, that's the, that's the process when we work with this one with the Python. Actually, it's the Python way, way easier for you to work with. Very simple. But in the, in the other, it is quite uh, complicated with a lot of them. So we see for this one here, you can see what, what works with my work that is nice. Now, see what happened here. Uh, and there's the name of her employees, Alexis, right? So we can see what happened with this one. Uh, so if go to check the condition here, and see uh, okay. 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 So name Alex here. Okay. So see, I check Alex here is not equal to I, I, I here, right? It's not equal. That's why it's a, a condition here to true. So I go on, I put here, one end of the cross, 2,000 here, and and so I figured out what is a uh, what is a data. See, see here. On again, you see everything about this one. Here. And the name is not like I got, so I do it again. Again, what is a cross? Rush here, five thousand. Okay. Okay. Right, what's the net? What's the grade? Now, now I want to exit it. Put I, I, I here. So we see what happened here. If I put I, I, I go with back to the to the loop here, right? It go with back to the loop, and the condition here is correct. Huh? Sorry, the condition here not correct. So you see, I see it, and a plan. That's all. That, that's all. That, that, is a, that is the mainline logic. So in the mainline logic, I just want to mention uh, about you have to understand the process. Uh, there are very two important components in the mainline logic. It is a house skipping and the mainline, uh, and the main body looking, right? House skipping, remember that. That is the action. You need to get the name for the variable who control the loop, you need it. You need to do it before the loop and outside the loop in order to to run the loop. Right? And as third, inside the body of the loop, at the end, at the end of inside the body, you need to get action to get a new value for the variable control the loop. Right? And if you look on this one here, if you look on this program here, can you tell me what is the variable who controls the loop, who controls? What is the variable who control you? Uh, name? Yes, that's all. If you want to know what is the variable who control the loop, you just look into the Y keyword here. Huh? You look in the Y keyword here. That because you need to, to, to make a decision you want to continue with the loop or not, right? And in that one, you have name here. It is a variable who control the loop. So in that case, you just keep doing it if the name is not act, act, act. If the name act, 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 it exists the loop. Right? Okay. So again, when you work with the when, from now on, when you work the debugging exercise, you need to figure out the first thing I recommend is that you have to figure out what is a variable who control the loop. Right? And from that you know for sure you need to get it in the housekeeping before and outside the loop. That's why you see you need to get it in the housekeeping before and inside the loop. Uh, and again, in the body of the loop, you need to get a new value of the variable who calls the loop here at the end of the body of the loop. That's all. That's a very basic uh, rule you have to follow with the main line of it. Okay? Okay, so in the case, if you in the case of modularization, right, you can use the hierarchy chart here. So it tells you 
what is the structure of the program? Is this one you break it down in the housekeeping detail loop and and the end of job here? And you can furthermore, you can break it down furthermore. Right? If you have a complicated program, you can break it down in the multiple layer of module. Here. And feature of the group program design, right? Use a prom and use a decoding food on some that see but not comment. I, I explained it to you, right? But from now on, I expect that whenever you want to wrap the program, put have a command. Uh, in the raptor, you do not have to put the inline command hours, otherwise, very right, confusing. But in the raptor, at least you have to put the header command. But in the Python, it, it should work with the both of the hand, header command and, or inline command. Right? So, inline command, uh, and of the first technology. Like that. Huh? So, huh? Okay, that is very, very, very helpful in the case you are the, you are the programmer. Right? Because, again, it's, it's for the command, you have no benefit from the computer part of When you have it or you don't have it, it executes exactly the same. But from the, from the programmer, when you look into that, you know what is going on. Uh, yeah, uh, variable is very important. Try to use a meaningful variable, right? Uh, uh, clear statement, avoid a uh, confusing life, right? Sometimes you have to use a temporary variable. Temporary variable is not, it's not the input and not the output. That is, a, that's why the name temporary, right? Uh, you see, it, the K of this one here. I can use a two more temporary variable, discard right and save right, in order to figure out what is the same operation. Okay. From it's also very important. Uh, you see, it should tell the user what is going on in the program. Uh, please enter the length of rectangle and enter the width of rectangle. Now, from now on, from now on, I expect you to do with the echoing input also. Echoing input that if you take the value from the input and it take it out into the output or into the subsequent prompt of the output. Right? So think about this one uh, again for this program here. You can see, you can see about this program here. Now, I take it out. I take it out. Uh, I take it out from the input. You know that for this program, you have two input here, right? You have the length and the width. And in the in the output, I take it out. Uh, I take it out from input here. I take it out from input here. So see, I run this program here. Now, if I have the length of 20 and the width of 15, uh, so the output here, see, it might be way, way more set, right? Uh, the area of the rectangle with the length of, what is it? It take it out value from input, right? And what is it? It take it out value from the input. I, and later on, if I if I run another one here, this one I have twelve, I have eight here. Uh, the output here to change, right? Check it out. Make sense? And you do the same. You can do the same in the Python also. Uh, so Python, you can do it. Uh, name here, right? So you see, uh, enter across. I modify this one. Enter across of the employee. And this one is the name. I take it from it. Okay. Now, I know so, right? It would uh, bring here the class is put here. Uh, so, you see, when I run it here, all uh, right? And the name, uh, name is gross tick and the gross of the employee take it here. Right? It makes make way more sense than the user and it's also very easy to follow up with the going on. Make sense? Okay. So again, that is very, very uh, it's a really good practice when work the programming. And from now on, I expect it that for the Raptor program, you include the header command and you include the echo input here. And in the in the Python, you you can close the header command, inline command, and equal input. 
Okay, and every time you have some, you have the plan before the code. This this program is very simple, and sometimes you do not have the plan. Uh, you just go with the code. But if you have the very complex program, you should plan it before. And uh, you draw, you draw about how to adjust what, how many modules you want to break it in, and so on. Right. Net checking uh, is very important here. Uh, so whatever we will have to plan. When you're done with your program, you have to run it to check it, right? And you have the multiple input here. What happens if you enter the text? What happens if you enter the floating point number? What happens if you enter the string here? Right? You have many, many ways it can it can be a race error to your program. <laughs> Think carefully about the variable and module name to use. Like use a meaningful name here. Yeah. And design your program statement to be easy to read and use. Okay. So that's all about the that's all about this uh, lecture here. Now I do some of the slide about the Python. So I believe that so far you have a lot. You have to do a, a little bit with the Python. And in the case in the Python, you can look it uh, in my program. You can see how you do with assignment, how you do with the calculation, and how you want to take it out the output here. Right? So for this one here, whenever you want to take it out the output, you have to use a function print here. Right? Print this output. Right. And in this case, you can concatenate string with the number, but you, you convert this one here into the string format. Or, if, or if, I, I, actually, I don't know, I don't follow this rule. I just put it with the, I just put where my program is. I just put with the format here. I, I don't have to convert into string format. Uh, what else? Okay, now for, for this week, we have the, some, uh, we have one discussion about the UML here, right? Universal, uh, what is it? Universal marker. What is it? What is the stand for? Uh, Unified markup language. A lot of language. Oh, yeah. I forgot the uh, letter. Uh, I strongly recommend you that before you work with this one, you watch a video here. It's really helpful to your, uh, this one. Use sky diagram. Uh. We'll start with a high level overview. Then we'll talk about systems, actors, use cases, and relationships. And finally, we'll build an entire use case diagram together and go over examples to explain these concepts in depth. Have you ever had an idea that makes perfect sense in your head, but when you try to explain it to someone else, they're completely lost? Maybe your idea is for a new app, and every time you take a shot, right? For five minutes. Hi, my name is Chloe, and I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about UML use case diagrams. We'll start with a high-level overview, then we'll talk about systems, actors, use cases, and relationships. And finally, we'll build an entire use case diagram together and go over examples to explain these concepts in depth. Have you ever had an idea that makes perfect sense in your head, but when you try to explain it to someone else, they're completely lost? Maybe your idea is for a new app. And every time you talk about it, people don't really understand how they'd interact with the app or what it would do. This type of scenario is where a use case diagram is very helpful. Here's a simple description of a use case diagram. First, it shows a system or application. Then it shows the people, organizations, or other systems that interact with it. And finally, it shows a basic flow of what the system or application does. It's a very high-level diagram and typically won't show a lot of detail, but it's a great way to communicate complex ideas in a fairly basic way. Before we really get into the tutorial, let's talk about how you're going to make a use case diagram. You can draw them out with pen and paper, but a diagramming application is going to be much easier. Today I'll be using Lucidchart, and you can too, for free actually. Just click the link to access Lucidchart's website. Enter your email address and you'll have a free Lucidchart account in just a few seconds. It's easy to use and you can follow along with me as we build a use case diagram. Okay, so we're going to break down use case diagrams into four different elements. Systems, actors, 
use cases, and relationships. Let's start with systems. A system is whatever you're developing. It could be a website, a software component, a business process, an app, or any number of other things. You represent a system with a rectangle, and you put the name of the system at the top. We're going to build the use case diagram for a very simple banking application. We'll call our system Banking App. This rectangle helps define the scope of this system. Anything within this rectangle happens within the Banking App. Anything outside of this rectangle doesn't happen in the Banking App. The next element is an actor, which is depicted by this stick figure. An actor is going to be someone or something that uses our system to achieve a goal. That could be a person, an organization, another system, or an external device. So who or what is going to be using our banking app? The most obvious actor is a customer. We are going to have customers that download and use our banking app. Another actor that we'll want in our diagram is the bank. The bank is going to provide information that feeds into our banking app, like transactions and account balances. Here are a couple things to keep in mind when dealing with actors. First, it's important to note that these actors are external objects. They always need to be placed outside of our system. Second, actors need to be thought of as types or categories. For our banking app, an actor isn't going to be a specific individual or a specific organization. We wouldn't label our actors as John and Chase Bank. We want to keep things categorical. So right now we're saying that both customers and banks are going to use our app. And this brings up the topic of primary and secondary actors. A primary actor initiates the use of the system, while a secondary actor is more rational. So in our example, which actor is primary and which actor is secondary? The primary actor is customer. The customer is going to initiate the use of our system. They're going to pull out their phone, open up our banking app, and do something with it. Bank, on the other hand, is a secondary actor. The bank is only going to act once the customer does something. If the customer goes on the app to see how much money is in their account, only then does the bank engage with our system to provide the balance. Primary actors should be to the left of the system, and secondary actors should be to the right. This just visually reinforces the fact that customer engages with the banking app and then the bank reacts. The next element is a use case, and this is where you really start to describe what our system does. A use case is depicted with this oval shape, and it represents an action that accomplishes some sort of task within the system. They're going to be placed within the rectangle because they're actions that occur within the banking app. So what is our banking app going to do? We're going to keep things very simple. Our banking app is going to allow a customer to log in, check their account balance, transfer funds between accounts, and make payments towards bills. So if this is what our banking app does, we're going to have use cases that describe each of those actions. We'll have a use case called Login, another called Check Balance, another called Transfer Funds, and finally, Make Payment. You can see that each of these use cases starts with a verb and reinforces an action that takes place. We also want them to be sufficiently descriptive. If this use case just said Transfer, that'd be too vague. Finally, it's good practice to put your use cases in a logical order when possible. That's why we put login at the top. That's the first thing that will happen when a customer uses our banking app. The final element in use case diagrams are relationships. An actor, by definition, is using our system to achieve a goal. So each actor has to interact with at least one of the use cases within our system. In our example, a customer is going to log into our banking app. So we draw a solid line between the actor and the use case to show this relationship. This type of relationship is called an association, and it just signifies a basic communication or interaction. A customer is going to interact with the rest of these use cases as well. They're going to check balance, transfer funds, and make payment, so we'll draw solid lines out to each of those as well. Secondary actors will also have relationships. Remember, each actor has to interact with at least one use case. So which use cases will the bank interact with? When a customer wants to check their balance on the app, the bank is going to provide the correct amount. Let's draw a line between bank and check balance. Similarly, when a customer wants to transfer funds or make a payment, the bank is going to follow through with those transactions. We don't need to draw a line to log in because that process happens within the banking app. 
there's no need for the bank to actually get involved with the login process. There are three other types of relationships in addition to association. There's include, extend, and generalization. Let's build out this diagram with additional use cases in order to explain these types of relationships. When a customer types in their login information, our banking app is going to verify the password before completing the login process. But if the password is incorrect, the banking app is going to display an error message. So let's create two new use cases for verify password and display login error. When a customer wants to transfer funds or make a payment, our banking app is going to make sure there's enough money to complete those transactions. So we'll also create another use case called Verify Sufficient Funds. And finally, when a customer wants to make a payment, our banking app is going to give them the option of paying from either their checking account or their savings account. So we'll create two more use cases called Pay From Checking and Pay From Savings. Let's circle back to this Verify Password use case and talk about relationships again. How does Verify Password relate to the rest of the diagram? Neither of our actors are directly initiating this action. It's just immediately going to happen within our banking app every time there's an attempt to log in. This is an include relationship. An include relationship shows dependency between a base use case and an included use case. Every time the base use case is executed, the included use case is executed as well. Another way to think of it is that the base use case requires an included use case in order to be complete. When you have an include relationship, you draw a dashed line with an arrow that points towards the included use case. So in our example, login is the base use case and verify password is the included use case. Every time a customer logs in, our banking app will automatically verify password. This login use case won't be complete unless verify password is complete. So we draw a dashed line with the arrow pointing towards the included use case and we write include in double chevrons. The next type of relationship is the extend relationship. An extend relationship has a base use case and an extend use case. When the base use case is executed, the extend use case will happen sometimes, but not every time. The extend use case will only happen if certain criteria are met. Another way to think of it is that you have the option to extend the behavior of the base use case. When you have an extend relationship, you draw a dashed line with an arrow that points towards the base use case. In our example, login is a base use case and display login error is an extended use case. Our banking app won't display a login error message every time a customer logs in. This will only happen once in a while when a customer accidentally enters an incorrect password. Since this is an extend relationship, we draw a dashed line with an arrow that points to the base use case and write extend between double chevrons. Hopefully, this thoroughly explains the difference between include and extend relationships. But just in case, here's a very basic example to help differentiate between the two. If you sneeze, you will close your eyes. That's an included relationship because it's going to happen every time. Additionally, if you sneeze, you might say excuse me. That's an extended relationship because it supplements the sneeze, but isn't completely necessary in the sneezing process. Just remember that include happens every time, extend happens just sometimes, and don't forget that the arrows point in opposite directions. One quick thing to note is that multiple base use cases can point to the same included or extended use case. For example, both transfer funds and make payment are going to point to verify sufficient funds as an included use case. We want our banking app to make this check every time either of these base use cases occur. You don't need to duplicate the verify sufficient funds use case. The simpler your diagram, the better. The last type of relationship we'll discuss is generalization, also known as inheritance. When you make a payment from our banking app, you can do so from either your checking account or your savings account. In this scenario, make a payment is a general use case and pay from savings and pay from checking are specialized use cases. You could also use the terms parent and children. Each child shares the common behaviors of the parent, but each child adds something more on its own. To show that this is a generalization, we draw this type of arrow from the children 
up to the parent. You can have generalizations on use cases like we have here. You can also have generalizations with actors. In certain scenarios, you might want to distinguish between a new customer and a returning customer. You can make them both children to a general customer actor, which would allow you to have certain behaviors or qualities you need to children. One last shape that we'll quickly talk about is a use case with extension points. You can see an example here. The name of the use case is above the line, and then there are extension points below the line. Extension points are just a detailed version of extend relationships. This use case shows that a customer can set up their profile in our banking app. And then these extension points show us that when a customer is setting up their profile, they'll have the option to navigate to a couple different screens. If a customer is confused, they can go to profile help. And if they want details regarding their private information, they can go to privacy info. Those extension points branch off to extended use cases. Go to profile help and show privacy info. We can even add a note to show what sort of conditions would lead to these extension points. Now we have a complete use case diagram with various elements that help explain what our banking app does. This is a very basic example, but remember that even complex systems should be restricted to a simplistic visualization of functionality, behavior, and relationships. If you'd like to take a closer look at this example, click on the card in the upper right hand corner. You'll find this exact banking app example plus several other examples and resources. Thanks for watching this tutorial on UML use case diagrams. Please subscribe to our channel to see. There is a one, uh, something I, I just want to highlight about this one here. Again, okay, I just I remember but for every discussion you have to direct, right? The initial code is supposed on Thursday night, and you have to follow up to reply at least uh, to other students on, on, on some aspect of the About this one here, the book about this one, like, you already watch the video, you know that how to work with the new sky diagram for this one, right? So, in order to work with it, uh, uh, Discussion the first thing you uh, open the draw IO for this one, right? And you download the uh, you download the template, they, they already have the template here. So when you download that template, you open the draw IO, you open it in your device, right? And you open this thing here because I download, I saw it into the download here, so I open it. Right? So they already have the system here for you for the registration system, and they have the actor here. It's up to you. You can change it to the name student or the AG chat office or whatever it is, right? It makes sense, or whatever it makes sense. And for this one also, when we go to the flow chart here, you have many options with, uh, with this one, like so you see. You can uh, drag and drop. I'm not really sure about the process when you work with <laughs> when you work with the uh, with the uh, registration. So it totally is up to you. It's your own experience here how we work with this one. And also we have my uh, we have option right? We, sorry. Uh, what else? Uh, we have option. Can you use it? Right, so we see we have a whole bunch of the option here. And from that one you can work you can work with uh, you can work with include or or include or whatever you want for for the program. So we use so we use the right? so we can draw. That is include or include or you can put it here. Keep saying change. Add change. So this can put it include or what? Include here. Yeah, that's that's something you can you can work with this one. Again, I'm not really sure about the process and it's your own experience. So. Uh, again, I recommend you to watch a video again. It is not, it's not here. And download the template, use the trial, and open your template from trial and build your mm -hmm. Now, so I think now one more back to my slide here, right? So basically, for this, you need to know what is the system, what are the actors, and how is the relationship change. So we can have the primary actor, the one who initiates the use of the system. The secondary actor is the one who re react. Right? And with the use, use case, you have to include. Every time you have to basically the includes use case happen here. And you have to extend. And that's all. Okay. So I think that's all about the lecture for 
for more to number two now let's see let's see about the homework i can give you some uh, suggestion or comment when i work with the homework here so oh i think i i i, I still have one more to show you i if you look on, in my announcement i have the slide here i have a slide here to, you can download it uh, i have a slide here to explain more about 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 uh, red line logic that I, I have some slide to help you work with the debugging exercise from now from uh, now on so basically for this one let me open from my okay so basically the when from now on whenever we work with the debugging exercise i strongly recommend that you have understanding about the way the structure about the, the rule of the main logic. Right? So remember, you have the four uh, components here, declaration. Right? You have the housekeeping, you have the rule before and outside the rule. Uh, you have detail loop and you have end job here. Now, whenever you work with whenever you work with the main logic, whenever, whenever you work with the debugging side, the first step I recommend you, you have identified what is the value who controls the rule. Right? So if you how to know it, you just look in the keyword here. You just look into the keyword. You know that when you work with the loop, you have using word Y here, right? So after that, the name here is the one who controls the loop, right? So we know that the name here is the one who controls the loop. You know for sure. You need to get the name before the loop and outside the loop. And it should be done in the housekeeping here. That's why you see when the program calls the housekeeping here. Calls the housekeeping here. You need to get the name. Uh, you need to get the name from that here. That's why you see. You need to get the name. Otherwise, you have syntax error, right? Because later on, when you go to the, when you check the condition of the loop, if you do not have name, you have the syntax error for this one. Make sense? Uh, okay. So, the third rule here, the first one, you have identified what is the variable who controls the loop. The second one, you know for sure you have initialized the variable who controls the loop before and outside the loop. Normally, you do in the housekeeping here, right? And now, inside the body of the loop, you see when you call the loop here, when you call for the loop, when you call for detail loop here. After you've done everything, you have the action here. You have the action to change the the, the you have the action to change the value of the variable who calls the loop, right? That's why it keep the same and it's free with edit. I explain it very carefully and detailed on the class only. Make sense? Okay. Then follow some of the then follow some of the very very basic rule, right? So we can do you can do the same when you, you can verify it when you work with the raptor or when you work with the Python. Right? So see, in the raptor here, if you look at this one, if you look at the diagram, see it's the one who controls the loop here, right? And of course, you need to do it in the housekeeping. That's why you see in the housekeeping here, you need to get it, right? And Inside the body of the loop, at the end of body of the loop, you need to action to get the name of the next if Except in order to, to go back to the loop here, check it. So Python also, you know, see, you can do everything with the Python also. <coughs> so I recommend you 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 you, you, you read about this slice uh, and to know more how to work with the with the debugging exercise. Now I go back to the one example of the of this week uh, debugging exercise to see what goes wrong with your with your program. Now let's open it. Download it. Now, you follow the same rule here. Uh, this one is very simple. This one, uh, this one have no uh, loop here, so this one is very simple. And this one, remember that you have, the first thing you have to read about the, 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 the requirement here, about the header command here, what is the purpose, right? Compute and display the average rate of three tests. That's why you need three input here. Test number one, test number two, and test number three, right? And from that one, you just figure out the average by divided by three. This one is very simple. I don't want to correct it. You have to correct it. I said, oh, you have to check about syntax error and, and logical error. 
Now for this one here, I believe this second one. This second one is a follow the main line logic here. The second one here is a follow the main line logic here, right? So uh this a uh, zero code segment will be tend to configure display average grid of three tests from any number of children. Right? The program is still until the user enters a negative value for the first test score. Okay, so basically for this program here, the purpose of this program, right? The purpose this graph program here, right? You have many, many students. You have student number one, number two, number three, and, and, and so on. Yeah, right? number three and so on here. Yeah. So each student you have entered the test number one. One right? test number two and test number three, right? And what is it? What? Okay, so see this program is, is a loop, it keeps doing it, right? Uh, what is the test number one, S test number two, and test number three, and they figure out what the average for each student, right? So for this one here, if you look on this program, if you look on this program, the first thing I just want to to check to 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 ask you here, uh, okay. what is what is the variable who control the loop here? Yes, the second one, right? You can see both of the condition here, right? The program execute until the user enters the negative value for the first test form. Right? So basically for this one here, right? you can see the first thing is very easy here. You can see you look it up for the, the loop here, the keyword the Y. And this one, the test number one here. Right? So basically for this one, whenever the set number one greater than zero, keep doing it, keep doing it until he enters the negative number. Right? So now you know that the set number one here it is a variable who goes to the loop. You look it up in the in the housekeeping here. Housekeeping before the loop, right? Before the word. It's housekeeping. What is housekeeping? What wrong with the housekeeping here? What do you think? What wrong with the housekeeping? There's no input. Yes, right? This one only has the wrong. You have no input. You need to get the you need to get the value from user and you have to store it into the variable here. Right? How we correct it? Uh just input test one. Yeah, that's that's all, right? You have the you have to put it in post size one here for this one. Right? So basically you need to get it right? and it needs to store it into the into the uh, test. Uh, yes. And you can do this one with with a uh, with a uh, with a with, uh, with uh, python if you want, right? So now you see you've done with the you've done with the you've done with the housekeeping, everything okay now, right? So in the main body of the loop here, what is it? Right? Whenever it's test number one greater than zero, you go to here, enter the score for test number two. What else? What's wrong with this program here? Tell me, what's wrong? Uh, well, test, test two, S, the bottom. Sorry, say, say again. Test one. At the now, bottom. you see that for each student, they have three tests. Right? You will go to test number one here. Yeah, you need test number. No test. You need to get the input for the test number three yourself, right? That's why you need a prompt for the test number three, and you need the input for test number three here. Make sense? Okay. And after that, you figure it out what's average, and print it out what's average here. And again, you see at the end of the body of the loop here, you always need to action. You always need to action to get the, the value of the variable who controls the loop here. So set number one here it actually is the set number one of the next student, right? And of course you have to correct for the for the uh is consistently. Make sense? That's all. You just follow the same rule with this one. It, basically from now on with the with the debugging exercise, every every uh, program follows the same rule. I have a question. Have a question. question. Yes. Um at the beginning of the main loop, you had an input. And the output, couldn't you have combined those two? No, the output here is the prompt to tell user what to do. That yeah, is... but like, I don't know, I'm just thinking in Python, usually like... In the Python, of get... course. In the Python, of course, you can do it. Oh, okay, okay. sorry, okay. never mind. You can do it now. Let, let, okay, let's do this one with the Python, right? 
let's do this one in the Python device for the Python ESL. You have the test number one, you got it, that right? load here from uh, input, you got it from user, right? Yeah. First test. Observe. Uh, and you can think of this one here. Now, let me do it. I do it. I put this housekeeping. So, see, that is housekeeping. Now, I go to the loop. Why? Set number one. Greater than or equal number zero. I keep doing it, right? I keep doing it. So, here, I get the set number two. I change this two here. Right. All of the same. Right. Now, see, I done it. Now I have to declare what's average. Divide by three. Right. I just print it out. Uh, And now see that is a I put it have put it here right? Okay, see. I done, right? but see, I need to get the new test number one of the next field here, right? And see, and uh, the first test of the next field. Right? That's all. That's the program here. You shall see when you run program here. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I stopped. So see, and uh, the first field here, right? I am. 60, the second one, 70, the first one, 80, and now, you see, if you go back to the loop here, right, and uh, you have the option here, and there's the first step of the next student, so think about the next student, 70 here, 80, and 90 here, yeah, average, 80. Now, I want to exit it, I enter the negative, sorry, actually, for this one, I should be. Okay. Always tell user how to exit. Otherwise, I don't know how to exit it yet, right? So I have to run it again for this one. I have to run it again for this one. So 60, 70, 80. Now the next one, I have the 70, 80, and 90. Now I want to exit it, I put negative one. Exit it. Right? Okay, that's all. If you convert this one into the, into the Python, you see. I have the option to get the test number one here because the test number one it is the variable who controls the loop, right? That is the variable who controls the loop here. I need to get it, initialize it before and outside the loop. Now I done everything with this one. After at the end of the body of the loop, I need to action to get the new value of the variable who controls the loop. Make sense? Okay, that's all. This program is very, very, very simple. I know. So, that's all. Any other question? Any question? No, okay. So I think uh, you follow the same to do with, with the debugging exercise. Now let me go to the, what else? You have the raptor, right? You have the raptor here. Uh, this one very simple. Uh, this one is a tool of the after program very simple here. But one thing I want to highlight here, you to get the maximum point, to get the maximum point, you have to use the echo input. Right? I, 
I explain it to you like what is the echo input? It's the op it's the action you take the the value from input, you put it in the output or you put it in the next uh problem. Right? Okay. Now well I believe for the for the Python also it's very simple. The Python uh also This program here, see, draw it until the 2050. You have no input. I can you that the credit for a while here. Okay, it's my new page. Okay, so see, you have to assign an integer variable name with your front HD, right? That, that on your side, you just put the variable and then put the value for that one. Right? Think about this one. Seven game, right? Now, uh, here, here, okay. See, it's the same for here. It's a program. Right? And remember that if you want to execute it, check it here and submit it. Okay, that's all for this one. Now, the other one. Uh, the one the price minus the host price. Okay, so I think this one also simple. Now let me do the other one. Uh, let me see what is the other one. And again, remember that anytime if you have any challenge, you can you can send me email or inbox me or join my office hour. Okay, Now, uh, some of the common mistakes with the, my student with this one is that yeah, you do everything from the number one, number two, number three correctly, but number four here, right? Number four is explained to you here. You can see. Number four is explained to you here, right? <coughs> this program variable names, theory, and number dependent are initialized with the value here, right? With the value. But to make this program more flexible, modify it to accept interactive input. Right? That is the case. You have the option to allow the user enter his salary. Right? It's not always stick to the to the uh, uh, twelve hundred and fifty here. It can be the three thousand or fifty thousand or uh, five thousand or whatever it is. Right. So in that case, remember that in order to work with a, a more flexible, right, modified program here. Uh, modify program, modify this program. Uh, uh, more flexible, modify it to accept interactive input. So instead, assign the value at the beginning. Now we have action that you have to here. And uh, you need to get input from user. Uh, so it's up to any user. He can enter file or file whatever. Uh, 
So you remember that you have to convert it into the float and you get input, right? Uh, input and you got it and the dot salary. Right? Okay, and you do the same with your number dependent on that. You need to get it from any user. Not always stick to this value of this value. That's all. Okay. So I think that's all for the lecture for the for the for the uh, module number two. You have any question? So.